Joining us now and it's a CNN News 18 exclusive yet again after a British reporter quit the BBC because the BBC would not call the Hamas terrorists. And after Noah Abraham's a youngster, here comes a stalwart, a former general and also former prime minister of Israel. Mr. Ehud Barak joins us from Tel Aviv at this point. Namaste. Thank you very much for uh, taking the time out and joining us live here. Thank you very much. My first question to you, Mr. Barak, how do you read the current situation? You know, it started with a major blow uh, to Israel, unprecedented all along the history of uh, 75 years. Uh, we suffered uh, within the first uh, 24 hours, uh, some 1,300 uh, people were slaughtered. Most of them, most of them civilians, elderly people, babies, mm -hmm. okay, crazy. Uh, in a, a Qaeda like, uh, or ISIS, Daesh like. Yeah. Uh, brutality and, and uh, barbarian uh, processes. Hmm. So it was a kind of a, a shock for most of the public. Hmm. But uh, we recovered very quickly. We mobilized now uh, 350,000 reservist soldiers, so we have enough force both in the Gaza Strip and in the north, in the, Golan, hmm. uh, in the Lebanon border. Uh, we uh, established yesterday night a emergency uh, government or emergency cabinet to run the war mm -hmm. by adding two opposition members who were chiefs of staff, were uh, senior generals that commanded the army, and they had the gravitas and, and the uh, professionalism and calmness and understanding of war mm -hmm. to the cabinet. And we got uh, a far-reaching American support. They deploy here yes. uh, an aircraft carrier and sent us uh, equipment that we need for the for the war. So we uh, feel somewhat better, and uh, we are, you know, we are a defiant uh, mm -hmm. species. We are a, we we are a nation that knows how to unite when there is a common threat on us. Yes, and we are now united and uh, determined to put an end to this uh, type of uh, terrorism. It's more than terrorism, it's a kind of a, a crazy barbarian practices, slaughtering kids, decapitated victims, opening the, the tummy of pregnant women, crazy. And no nation can afford it sitting on its, uh, its uh, border. If you remember yes. from Qaeda case, the Qaeda case uh, some, company, uh, some countries send their soldiers over half of the globe in order to kill uh, the Al-Qaeda and Daesh yes. people in Iraq and earlier in Afghanistan. It's, uh, it's, we are part of this war, a uh, global war, but we are dealing with our uh, peace mm. or corner and we are determined to make sure that Hamas is paralyzed from its uh, military capabilities. And mm. every place they are there, we are going to destroy it. Mm. it it's phenomenal how uh, Israel comes together despite the internal drifts and political oppositions within. You unite when it comes to a common threat that threatens the nation. But uh, Mr. Barak, who is backing the Hamas? You know, they are backed by uh, money that unfortunately even our government allowed to stream that comes from, part of it comes from uh, Qatar mm -hmm. and part of some other donors. They are uh, helped by Iran, probably in money, but more in equipment, in ideas, in uh, training, whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, and they grow themselves gradually, you know, they took yeah. over, for the, the Gaza Strip was part of the Palestinian Authority. Correct. And they made a coup d'etat, very violent at the time as well, against Palestinians that came, not against Israelis, and uh, took over from the Palestinian Authority. And since then, Palestinian Authority could never go back. Mm -hmm. So in my judgment, there is a difference. Palestinian Authority, with all its uh, weaknesses, and it's, uh, they are short of perfect, they are mm -hmm. part of agreement. There is certain cooperation in fighting terror between Israel and Palestinian Authority. Okay. And in my judgment, they are the better part of the Palestinians. There are those in Israel in the recent five years, including the, the present government, right. who thought that uh, in order to block the possibility mm. of a two-state solution, 
probably it's better to weaken the Palestinian Authority and, and let the Hamas alive somehow. Hmm. That, I think it was a great mistake. Uh, and it helps them somehow to to develop their capabilities, okay. uh, but I I I think that nowadays everyone understands that you do not uh, you do, you not wait until the the crocodile jump at you Correct. if you can kill it when it's still uh, small. True, but, but there are those Prime Minister Barak uh, who are apologists who try to humanize terror. They want to broad brush the activities of the Hamas under the entire Palestine struggle and this is happening across the world what would you like to say to these people? Uh, I, I, I would tell them that uh, life will show and prove to them that violence is not the way mm. and uh, the Palestinian people tried violence many times I remember when I was Prime Minister they tried and in fact I spent uh, significant part of my life fighting yeah. against Palestinian terror. Mm. And when yes. I met later on with uh, Arafat, he, and we used to tell mm. Clinton and others that you, you have blood on your hands. Mm. He said, uh, and you also had blood. <laughs> but there is a difference. I was sent by a democratically elected government mm. to to always target it on those who executed or, or uh, launched, uh, operated and planned terrorist attack against citizens. Mm. And the difference is we never targeted. We sometimes, uh, unfortunately, killed uh, innocent person, but we never aimed a target at, uh, yeah. at uh, innocent citizens. And you deliberately sent them in order to kill, kill uh, innocent, yeah. innocent citizens. That's what we uh, call having uh, blood on your Yeah, the difference is in the intent. They came to kill innocents. Here in this case, you are targeting terrorists and innocents are dying uh, because they're coming in the line of fire, which is unfortunate. But Israel, is it now being dragged into a long-drawn war, given what you're getting your hands into? I would happy to be able to tell you that I have a clear vision how to make hmm. it uh, fast and, and, and clear. Right. Uh, that's not the case. We have right. certain constraints on our operations. Mm. One is the uh, uh, issue of the hostages, there are about 150 of them. And it's it's a subtle issue. I don't want to dive into it because uh, even the Hamas can see these kind of borders. Right. But it's a constraint. Another constraint is the uh, possibility that uh, that uh, it will spread into the north, into Hezbollah, mm. probably some dormant cells of, of Hamas or jihad, Islamic Jihad in Judea and Samaria, in the, the West Bank, and probably even uh, militias, in uh, Shiite militias mm. backed by Iran, who are deployed now in, the, in Syria, in the yes. Syrian part of the Golan Heights. Uh, we might find ourselves surrounded by all of this and this is a uh, we are not interested in i would mm. not recommend it to to the hezbollah as well because they will pay a heavy price mm. for it but if we face it we will fight it as well right. and even with all these uh, elements around us i can tell you honestly it will be tough it will uh, be long it will cost us a lot of toil and sweat and tears right. and blood but uh, we are not under existential threat and we will win this uh, this war mm. another another element that i can call a constraint is right. the fact that even if we take over the whole the whole Gaza, and right. it might take i don't know two weeks or, or two months mm. we take over and, mm. and clean it from any uh, any element that was uh, related to hamas every right. munition every lab every a launcher of rocket and then every office where they were at. Uh, right. We still have a question, to whom we pass the torch? Yeah. So ideally it was a great idea if some Arab force would uh, demand that we will leave, right. but take over. The Egyptians probably with the uh, Emirati, the Moroccans or Bahrain, right. some multi-force, multinational force right. that will take, let's say for six months, responsibility yeah. to Huh. Uh, block the Hamas from coming back huh. and then gradually bring back the Palestinian Authority to govern. Huh. Uh, it's their own people. 
It's idealistic, but I don't know if they are right for it, and we cannot impose it upon them. Should emerge from them. And there is the last kind of constraint is the fact that we are acting under certain, you know, now the whole world is with us because of the pictures of what happened. But this tend to decline. When people will see innocent victims in uh, collateral damage, we try to hit only target and try to have a warn in advance, but we cannot avoid it from uh, causing certain damage to innocent people there. Hmm. We are committed to the laws of uh, international laws Correct. Of, uh, of war. Correct. We are committed to them, we are trying our best to do it, but it's a constraint. Because you cannot do whatever comes to your mind. Yes. So we have to navigate it. So I cannot tell you how exactly it will develop. Mm. It's probably start here. It might be developed against our will. The, the, right. the, uh, deteriorate into full-scale exchange with the, uh, uh, with the Hezbollah, for example. We are ready. We understand. It's going to be tough. But we suffered, you know, yes. never in our history. Yes. Such a group of uh, people... Uh, of this size, yes. citizens were killed by enemy, by yeah. external enemy that came in yeah. one day. You know, I think that India is probably 100, 140 yeah. times a bigger population than Israel, 140 yeah. times. Hmm. So if we lost, let's say, uh, 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 1,300 people, right? Uh, so it might be 1300 you you multiplied it's probably 169 175 indians being killed by some terror attack within 24 hours that would drive you crazy would do whatever it takes to destroy right and uh, that's where we are and we feel certain kind of uh let's say closeness to you you always suffer terror you see it from close, the different, you never swayed, you were ready to fight it. In this right. regard, we have a common value. Right, but Prime Minister Barak, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, President Biden, among other leaders, have very clearly drawn the distinction between terror, Hamas, and also the entire two-state argument between uh, Israel and Palestine. But do you see this entire West Asia you know, dynamic changing after this conflict? after this war that Israel has unleashed against the Hamas? Listen, you think this silence... Yes, uh, uh, is that your wife behind you, sir? Yeah, yeah. silence in Tel Aviv because of a meeting. But we are secure here. This is the room in every modern Israeli part. There is a room made with very heavy concrete walls in order to be able to suffer even a direct heat. I turned it into library, but I'm oh. sitting in this... Uh, Shelter, yeah. so. And that's why ma'am is standing there because that's the safest corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that. <laughs> so, so she's more uh, beautiful. She, she probably attract all the attention of the viewers. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but if I, uh, are you in yeah. a position but to, to answer come, this question? Come back yes. to your, your uh, question. Thank you. First of all, we are, we are uh, thankful for the uh, uh, expression that came from India and for the position of uh, Prime Minister Modi in this regard, uh, as well as we are thankful to President Biden or President uh, Macron and, and so well, very. Oh, now you can hear the oh. interception by the Iron Dome. Iron Dome, yeah. Uh, okay. Interceptor that they hit the, yes. the they missile hit before the they side landed side. in Tel Aviv. And, um, and so, you know, I want first to say that it's not practical hmm. to execute now a peace agreement. It, I, I think that this event of the last week even uh, delayed right. into the beyond the foreseeable future the possibility of have this trilateral deal that emerged between the United States, Saudi Arabia, and Israel to normalize rela- relations with, with right. between us. Uh, and uh, for the short term, it it works against any any kind of uh, agreement, but. Our long-term objective is still to have to live in peace. Right. Uh, you cannot you cannot negotiate with uh, with the Hamas uh, as a kind of Al Qaeda-like organization. But uh, it doesn't mean that we cannot, at a certain point in the future, negotiate with Palestinians. It's not. Uh, 
my vision, and it is under dispute in Israel, the government, uh, Tanyahu, for example, sees, thinks differently, so that huh. somehow a one-state solution is better, in spite of paying lip service from time to time for two states. I'm confident that the only viable long-term uh, solution uh, is a two-state solution, mm. because if it's one-state solution, it will become either non-Jewish or non, non-democratic. Because right. if the block of millions of Palestinians uh, between the River Jordan and the Mediterranean, there are about equal numbers of Jews and uh, and non-Jews, non-Jews, mainly Muslims, yeah. and the the Muslim population going even faster than ours. So within uh, uh, even immediately, it's by national nation. If if they if they cannot uh, if they can vote, if they can vote. Yeah, it's yes. a by national nation, yeah. and within short term, uh, mm. by national with Muslim majority. Right. That's not the the, the Zionist or the Israeli dream. Israel. And if they cannot vote as a permanent, they only cannot vote for 50, 60 years. But if we formally make it permanent, yeah. that's not a democracy. Mm. Where uh, millions of probably. Uh, Mm. Half of uh, mm. almost half of the human beings under the, your control cannot vote. That's not democracy. Mm. And that will cut underneath the uh, legitimacy and cohesion of our society. Mm. So, but uh, I admit that that's not something for tomorrow, or for a month, for a month after the end of this uh, clash, mm. which might be quite long anyhow. Uh, so, we bear it in mind. There is a old Romans. Yeah. That if you don't know which port you want to reach, no wind will take you there. So I know which port I want to reach, and I w- want to lose my my way or my uh, eye contact with this uh, right. uh, objective. But this uh, debate or dispute within Israel had to be solved after we together put an end to the military uh, capabilities of Hamas in Gaza. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prime Minister Barak. I saw ma'am actually exit the room. That means that the threat has passed and the missiles that were fired at Tel Aviv have been neutralized. I wish you and your loved ones safety and India stands in solidarity with Israel in this fight against terror. Thank you, sir.